Good afternoon. Welcome to TNC Radio. Live. This is the Truckers Network Radio Show. And now here's your host, Shelly Johnson. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. Yes, this is the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNC Radio. Live, where we offer the news, information, traffic, weather, entertainment, and sports our commercial drivers want to hear. Many of our drivers are veterans, and our station is very supportive of veterans. VetJobs.org is the number one online job resource for the military and our veterans. With us today is their founder and retired Rear Admiral Dan Kleppel to talk about what they're doing for our vets and getting them jobs. Welcome, Admiral Kleppel. I really appreciate you being on the show with us today. Well, thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. I thought I'd start with you telling us a little bit about yourself and your military and civilian background. I was reading a little bit about it. You've got, you've had quite the stellar career. Well, it's, uh, it's something I really enjoyed. Uh, I had, I was able to do a variety of, uh, things in my, uh, dual career. Uh, I actually, uh, started out going to college to become an engineer. Oh, Okay. And I had a co-op program with McDonnell Douglas in St. Louis. And uh, so I would come back and uh, after my uh, sophomore year, I was back at uh, McDonnell Douglas in St. Louis working on a uh, space program contract that they were getting. That was back in the days when we were working on sending people to the moon. And, uh, one of the secretaries in my office was dating a, a Navy test pilot. We were, this was during Vietnam and we were building two or three have four phantoms a week, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that whole squadron of test pilots doing the uh, initial testing and fly away and moving the airplanes out to the fleet. And uh, I ended up spending a couple, three days with those folks, and I decided that they were having a lot more fun than the engineers back in my office. So I went back to school, and I got into a two-year Navy ROTC program, and uh, they put me through what was called a flight indoctrination program, so they bought my private college license while I was in college. And uh, when I graduated, I went to Navy flight school and uh, became a naval aviator. I uh, ended up doing seven years of active duty and did a couple of aircraft carrier cruises in the Mediterranean post-Vietnam. And I did a tour as a flight instructor. And then uh, after seven years of active duty, I transitioned to the uh, Naval Air Reserve. So okay. I basically got off active duty on a Wednesday. I joined the reserves on Friday, did a drill weekend, Saturday, Sunday in New Orleans, and started my new airline job on Monday. And that was kind of the pace of things for the next 30 years as both an airline pilot and a naval reservist. So So what size planes did you fly for the commercial airline? Well, I flew DC-9s and MD-80s and 757s. And uh, in my last uh, 15 years, I was a Boeing 767 international captain. Oh, very cool. That had to have been interesting. You got a lot of travel in. Do you, when you're a commercial pilot, do you have much time to sightsee at all? Well, most of the international flights were had 24-hour layovers. Okay. So it was, uh, it was interesting. I spent a lot of time in Europe, a lot of time in the Caribbean. Spent a couple of years doing nothing but flying to Hawaii. Been to every airport in Hawaii a number of times. The uh, the flying I got to do in the Navy was was just outstanding as yes, a reservist. You said that uh, you w- w- would land on an aircraft carrier for our listeners. I'm sure they're kind of curious. What is that like to take off and land on something that's moving on the ocean? <laughs> well, in the daytime, it's like an e-ride at Disney World. It just couldn't be more fun. So at the at the end of my career, by the end of my career, I had 650 carrier landings, and 120 of them were at night. So the 120 at night were always a challenge. They never got easier. <laughs> they were always scary. 
and the the day landings were just one of the neatest things I'd ever done. And I I'd go back and do it again. So if, so if the daytime was an e ride, what was the nighttime? Yeah, just sometimes dark, rainy, scary. <laughs> just, just 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 a scary movie, huh? Yeah. It, every once in a while, you you get a we call it a pinky where the full moon was out, and you could see that you could actually see the deck when you touched down. But most of the time, with the lighting they had, you didn't. You never saw the deck until mm. you jumped out of your airplane. Oh wow. my goodness! Wow. I have heard the landing on an aircraft carrier is really considered a, a controlled crash. Am I correct? Is that a correct description? Well, you're you you don't flare like a that you you do an airliner. I mean, you you land with a pretty good jolt, mm-hmm. and of course you catch the wire and then. You push forward in your seat. You automatically go to full power as soon as you touch down in case right. you skip the wire. If you skip a wire, then you just go around because you're at full power already. Did you ever miss the wire? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everybody does something, right? Wasn't wasn't that unusual. There's uh, the, the hook that hangs down from the back of the airplane is held down by hydraulic pressure. It can, it can actually bounce. Sure. It can hit the deck and bounce. It can bounce right over the wire. Which ship did you fly on? My two bad training cruises were on the USS Forrestal, but okay. during my reserve, I was in the same squadron, reserve squadron in New Orleans for 15 years. Wow. So we care quality about every two years. So I've, I've got landings on at least 10, 10 different carriers. Wow. Fantastic. Did it ever make you nervous? The daytime never made me nervous. The daytime just made me excited. Okay. The nighttime always made me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just part of the job, right? You just kind of just did it. Yeah, so it was. Well, I would think that um, it wasn't boring, and it gave you really good training when you retired from the Navy and went into civilian life. Well, I retired uh, after 36 years in the Navy. Right, because you said you were in the Reserves. Right. Mm-hmm. But I did I did a lot of things in my last 10 years when I became a flag officer. I, I did, I can't tell you how many recalls to active duty. I, I, was, I had five commands as an admiral, and three of them were active duty. I was able to, uh, Debbie and I lived in Iceland for a year. Oh, I was the commander cool. of the Iceland Defense Force. Uh, we ran the Navy's boot camp up at Great Lakes for a while. Okay. We ran the Naval Strike and Air Warfare Center out in Fallon, Nevada, where the air wings work up before they go to the carriers. And uh, that was a flying job. So I was back flying the F-18. At, uh, I was a flying two-star admiral at age 52. Wow. Fantastic. So that was pretty exciting. Yeah. That's wonderful. Did you? What else did you fly besides the F-18? I flew, uh, well, I trained in the uh, T-2. Right. Buckeye, and then I carrier called in the F-9, TF-9J, mm-hmm. which was a, mm-hmm. actually a Korean warfighter. I was one of the last students to train in the F-9. And then I, I flew the A-7. Uh, I instructed in the A-4 and then uh, transitioned to the F-18. Wow. And what a transition. And it had to be exciting, though, to be, uh, a, you know, having done some work at McDonnell Douglas to be flying the F-15, right? Or the F-18. Well, I'm, I'm kind of a poster child for Boeing because I flew the 767 as a captain and the F-18 as a commanding officer. Yeah, absolutely. You and they're our, kind career. of our hometown company. Who, who did you fly for for uh, the airlines? American. Okay. You've certainly had a stellar career and certainly nothing boring at all. This is this is uh, wonderful. I never, I never, I never got bored and I never wanted to retire. I retired both times because they told me it was time. <laughs> and and that's when you know you're doing something you love. If you don't ever want to retire, it's not work. You know. I would even go back and I, I any job I had in the Navy or the airline, I'd go back and do it again. Mm-hmm. I never, never disliked going to work. I always enjoyed going. 
This is super interesting. We have to go to break here. When we come back, I want to talk about vetjobs.org and how all of that started because it's all very interesting and we want to know what you're doing for our veterans and all of that. We're talking with the founder of vetjobs.org, retired Rear Admiral Dan Kleppel. This is TNC Radio. Live. Stay tuned for more coming up. Driving 11 hours a day, seven days a week can be emotionally and physically exhausting. Sleep is a very important part of a long-haul truck driver's life. Being well-rested and alert makes driving a lot safer for both the trucker and other drivers on the road. Getting enough sleep may sound easier than it seems. Living on the road makes it difficult to get the recommended eight hours of sleep. In fact, it's common for truckers to not get eight hours of sleep due to the 11-hour work shift. To help, we've put together five tips to help truckers stay awake while driving. Take vitamins. One way truckers can stay awake while driving is by taking vitamins. Not only are vitamins good energy boosters, they have tons of other health benefits too. Vitamin B helps with fatigue, depression, mood boosting, and muscle weakness. Consider adding vitamins to your morning routine. Eat healthy. An unhealthy diet has a huge impact on one's overall health. Dr. Jennifer Satchek says, Our bodies rely on the energy and nutrients we get from food. So what you eat, and how and when you eat it, can either drain you or sustain you. It might be more convenient to stop at a fast food restaurant or truck stop, but constantly eating junk food drains your energy. Take a nap. Before you hit the road, consider taking a short 20-minute nap. Several studies have shown that a quick nap immediately increases alertness and gives a boost in cognitive performance. Stay hydrated. Water has many health benefits. One benefit is reducing the chance of being fatigued. Drinking a pint of cold water is a great way to refresh yourself and stay more alert. Listen to upbeat music. Listening to upbeat music will have you tapping your foot, singing along, and staying alert in no time. Avoid listening to relaxing music or audiobooks. Those tend to make drivers more relaxed and sleepy. Truckers have a very demanding job. In order to deal with the stress and demands, it's very important to get the right amount of sleep. Hopefully these five tips will help you stay awake while driving. Hi, this is Bill Waldrop. Want to learn more about trains? Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central for The Train Station. It's right here on TNCRadio.live. Welcome back to the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNCRadio.live. I'm Shelley Johnson with Tom Kelly. We're talking with the founder of VetJobs.org, retired Rear Admiral Dan Kleppel. Dan, you were telling us a little bit about your background. It's super interesting as a pilot in the Navy, as, a, as well as uh, working for American Airlines. Um, I wanted to talk about VetJobs.org and how all of this got started. Well, I have to tell you that it started with my wife, Debbie. When I was still on my last tour, I retired as the commander of the Naval Air Reserve. I was based in New Orleans and I was on active duty and Debbie had, um, she had given up several uh, very good jobs, executive positions to chase me around the world. As I said, we lived in Iceland for a year, we went to Chicago, we went out to Fallon, Nevada. We had a job in Millington, Tennessee for a while. So mm-hmm. she, uh, she really understood the sacrifices that military spouses have to go through to support their veteran uh, spouse. And so she started a program for military spouses called the Military Spouse Corporate Career Network. Okay. And it was designed to provide training and job placement for military spouses to help them uh, get back into the career field that they wanted when they had to move every two to three years. And uh, she operated that very successfully uh, till 2010. She started it in 2020, let's see, 2005. And in 2010, the director of the Army National Guard wrote her a letter. Basically, it was a letter of needs asking her to build something for his Army Guardsmen. And... Uh, 
Corporate America Support You came about in 20, 2010 to start helping guardsmen find jobs. And it eventually evolved into a full-fledged veteran employment program. And then in uh, 2019, uh, we were able to uh, purchase a small for-profit called Vet Jobs. And we got the domain name and uh, we also bought the book domain name for military spouse jobs. So today our organizations are called vetjobs.org and military spouse jobs.org. So it's actually two nonprofits that we run. Okay. And uh, I started doing this full time. I was kind of with her on the periphery until I retired from America. And uh, so I've been the CEO of both nonprofits since I retired from America. That's about eight years ago. So in, in probably in 2005, it was about a $500,000 a year program. And this year it'll be a $5 million a year program. Wow. So we just went over 77,000 job placements since we started tracking that in 2010. That's astounding. That's, that's terrific. So we're getting pretty good at it. Yeah. It's rather interesting that the military doesn't have something like that, uh, and you you were able to step up to the plate and help because certainly military spouses with the transitory nature of what their spouses are doing, they get a lot of interruptions in their career. So that presents a lot of challenges trying to transition after their spouse is retired from the military. And then, of course, trying to transition from the military as a vet. I imagine it's it's not the same what are some of the challenges that veterans and their spouses really well, that's, face? That's, that's a good, good and interesting question because what I've found is that, that the number one roadblock I think that transitioning service members have is trying to decide what field they want to work in. Mm-hmm. Do I want to work? Do I want to do what I was doing in the military? Or did I leave the military because I didn't like what I was doing in the military? Or do I just want to try something completely different? Or do I uh, do I have a lifelong dream of doing something? There, there, there are a lot of uh, different variations of the answer to those questions because uh, when 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 a person transitions from the from the military, whether it's after a, their first enlistment or after a 20 year career or after a 30 year career, uh, the, the desires may be different. They may be looking for a location. They may be looking for a specific company. They may be looking for a field, a uh, certain career. And what we do is try to determine the field that they want to be in or the place they want to live or the company they want to work for. And then we have a huge training program. Uh, it's a career progression type training program so that we can have our applicants prepared to get the best job in that field that they've chosen. So we help them decide what, what do you need? Do you need some kind of certification? Do you need some kind of training? Do you need a badge of some kind that put on your resume? Or do you need to go back to school? What is it you need to get the best job in the field that you've chosen? So um, we're, we're, we do a lot of hands-on. We don't, we've got great technology that's donated to us by IBM. It's called Brass Ring. Mm-hmm. And it's tied to the Watson computer. So we have great technology, but we do a lot of hands-on. Uh, our career specialists spend a lot of one-on-one time helping people make those decisions of what field do you want to be in? What do you need to, to get the best job? And now let's build your resume so that you can go after that particular job you want. So we we handcraft those resumes for every particular job they want to apply to. That's wonderful. Now, do they start with an aptitude test? Uh, is that how you kind of determine the strengths and that sort that's, of thing? That's one of the tools. Mm-hmm. There's, there are some tools that the Department of Labor has. There are some tools that the Department of Defense has. There are some tools that we've acquired from other uh, entities. So we, we, we've got a lot, of, a lot of tools that we 
that we can use. Now, if they want to go back to school, do you find the funding resources for them? Um, is this available from the military? Is, is there money available because they're coming out of the military? What we do is we, we partner with uh, training companies, whether okay. they're for-profit or not-for-profit, but we only partner with training companies who don't charge the veteran. Okay. Now, the veteran has got, always got the opportunity to use their GI Bill to go back to school or get training if they want to. But there are a lot of opportunities right now. Uh, there's a lot of government money out there available for training right now. Amazing amount of government money. And I, I'll give you an example. The VA has a program called Vet Tech. This is just an example. I mean, there's hundreds. Mm-hmm. You know, the Interior Department has money. The Commerce Department has money. The VA has money for training. So this particular uh, program called Vet Tech. If you're a if you're a for profit training company and you want to be vetted by the VA for a syllabus that can lead to a good job, you can submit your application to the VA. The VA will approve your syllabus, and then, for example, they will give that company twenty five hundred dollars when the veteran applies for the school. They'll give them another $2,500 when they graduate from the course and finish it, complete, complete the course. But they'll give them another $5,000 if it actually leads to a job placement. Okay. So we've partnered with a lot of these training companies so that we do the job placement portion. And they share some of that revenue with us so that we can mm-hmm. afford to do more of it. And uh, I can't tell you how many training partners we have right now. This is we, wonderful. We executed in the first quarter of this year, we we had 20,000 successful training opportunities. Wow. So that's wow. that's how important training wow. is right now. Because mm-hmm. we're, we're in a very different situation than we were, let's say, this time in 2019, where we had a huge number of jobs, a lot of people looking for jobs, and... Uh, right now we've got 11 million jobs available. We've got about eight and a half million people looking for jobs. So there's a people shortage, but there's also inflation in salaries. So if people have quit their jobs and, and last year was just a phenomenal situation. We had, we had over 20 million people quit jobs last year. That's never happened in my lifetime. So people that are looking for jobs today are looking for a better job and a job that pays more. The companies are all short of people. Sure. But if they're going to pay a higher starting salary and maybe it's higher than the rest of their workforce, they've got to make sure that that person is really qualified for the job they're trying to fill. Otherwise, how are they going to justify that to the rest of their workforce? Right, right. You know, if they end up having to give everybody in the company a pay raise to match what they're paying the new guy, you know, they might be bankrupt in three years. Who knows? Sure. So there's a skills gap now that we're seeing between what a company wants in an applicant, and what the applicants actually possess. So we've, uh, we've quadrupled our training availability so that the applicants do have what's required to meet uh, the skills that the employers are looking for. This is a wonderful service that you're providing, and I definitely want to get into more detail. We do have to go to break here. We're talking with the founder of VetJobs.org, retired Rear Admiral Dan Kleppel. You're listening to the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNC Radio.Live. Stay tuned for more coming up. This info blog on TNC Radio.Live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app dot the truckers network dot net six things to consider before starting your career in trucking truck drivers are often referred to as the backbone of america they haul roughly 70 percent of america's freight nearly every good consumed in the united states has been shipped by a truck right now the demand for truck drivers is higher than ever the growing truck driver shortage in america is a topic of concern and has been for the past four years 
The United States is in dire need of people to start driving trucks. Are you considering becoming a truck driver, but not quite sure if it's the career path for you? Here are six things potential truck drivers need to know before starting their career in the trucking industry. Know your why. Why do I want to become a truck driver? Is one of the first questions you should ask yourself before starting your career in trucking. Knowing and understanding your why is important so that you make sure that trucking is something you'll enjoy. Nothing is more draining than working in a career field that you're not passionate about and excited about. Truck drivers are already more likely to struggle with mental health problems because of the trucking lifestyle. So to avoid dreading your trucking career, ask yourself, why do I want to be a truck driver? Long work hours. It's obvious that truck drivers spend a majority of their workday in the driver's seat, but many new drivers don't realize how hard it can be sitting for long periods. Drivers spend hours upon hours sitting down. This can result in leg, back, and neck pain. If you're the type of person who cannot handle sitting down for several hours at a time, then truck driving is not for you. Another thing to consider is how long a typical workday is for a truck driver. Drivers are legally allowed to work 14 hours a day, but are limited to 11 hours of driving time. They must take a mandatory 30-minute break by the 8th hour of duty. Following the long workday, drivers must have 10 hours of off-duty time. In a work week, drivers cannot exceed more than 60 hours of work or 70 hours over 8 days. Failure to follow these HOS rules can result in being shut down, fines, and lower carrier safety ratings. A new lifestyle. There's not a career quite like trucking. It's nothing like your typical 9 to 5 Monday through Friday job. It's long hours, days, and most times weeks away from home. Truck drivers often experience loneliness, depression, and anxiety. If you're someone who's used to working with many people, then truck driving will be a shock. Drivers will go days or weeks without seeing their loved ones, and it can really take a toll on truckers, especially those who are new. Adjusting to this lifestyle can be challenging at first, but once you do, you can live a rewarding life as a truck driver. Getting seat time. The more experience you have as a truck driver, the better. With more experience, you'll land better truck driving jobs and better pay. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, truck drivers earn an average of over $40,000 a year. Yet, many trucking companies advertise higher rates of pay for experienced drivers. Over time, you can negotiate a higher rate per mile. Your relationships will suffer. It doesn't matter if you're on the road or at home. Make time for family. Make it a priority to talk to someone in your family once a day. It can be tough for truckers, especially long-haul truck drivers, to maintain relationships with their families due to the trucking lifestyle. Keeping in contact with your loved ones will help life on the road be less lonely. Lack of sleep Getting the recommended amount of sleep each night is a rare thing for truckers. Although sleep may be difficult for truckers because of the uncomfortable way of living, it's essential to their well-being and safety. Make it a priority to get good sleep and make a sleep schedule. Set an alarm for a certain time and turn off all electronics and get your much-needed sleep. Not getting enough sleep makes life on the road miserable. Although there may seem like many downsides, truck driving can be a very rewarding and exciting career. As a truck driver, you have freedom on the open road and the chance to see America's most beautiful places. For information on trucking, be sure to check out the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net This is Heath Sanders and you're listening to TNC Radio. Live. Welcome back to the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNC Radio. Live with Shelly Johnson and Tom Kelly. We're talking with the founder of vetjobs.org, retired Rear Admiral Dan Kleppel. Uh, Admiral Dan, your organization provides such a valuable service to our veterans. You were talking about it in our last segment. You provide training and job placement and assessments and one-on-one -on -one assistance, which is absolutely terrific. I understand you also help veterans transition into trucking jobs. Well, our probably our biggest client that we that we've worked with, we've been working with them since uh, I think since we started, Patrick since 2010 they've been around part of us part of our organization for a long time and uh, the reason we like them 
uh, is that they'll offer any veteran or an active guard or reservist. So if you're if you're a veteran of the military or you are still active in the Guard and Reserve, they'll give you a full scholarship for your CDL. And if you have used your GI Bill to get your CDL, they'll reimburse you for it. Oh, wow. They have a, a good starting salary. They're basically the largest trucking company in the world. And, you know, there are a lot of good trucking companies out there, and I'm sure that your audience represents all of them. Mm-hmm. It just happens that we built a relationship with Swift a long time ago, and uh, we continue. I mean, basically, if I can, if I can find a veteran that wants to drive a truck over the road, uh, I, I'm not sure they've ever turned anybody down. Uh, I have read that veterans actually make really good drivers just because of the discipline and the kind of training they've already had in the military. Well. The, the, I'll be honest, the biggest attraction that SWIFT has for veterans mm-hmm. is they stay with the job longer than their typical civilian hire. Okay. And retention is huge. Uh, you know, there's a huge shortage in the truck driving industry right now. And the ability to, re- tr- tr- to retain a driver for a trucking company right now is huge. You know, that that doesn't completely surprise me, Admiral, but I'm wondering, why do you think that is? Uh, well, lots of reasons. Uh, there are a lot of truck driving jobs out there right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them are over the road, some of them are your home every night, and some people like the change. So they'll go from one to the other if they, if they want to do some over the road trucking they could do that for a while if they want to do be home every night they could choose that if they want to i mean there's just so many truck driving jobs available right now. so it depends on what kind of driving you want to do how much money you want to make how how important it is to be at home at night um it's kind of up to the individual yeah but i, I think too though those who've been in the military they're, they know what a hard day's work is, and they're willing to put in a hard day's work. They've learned how to do that. And mm-hmm. I think sometimes, I'm not calling them any, anybody soft, but, you know, sometimes people can be a little bit soft, right? And you, know, you learn to be ha- harder edge, I think, if you've had some time in the military. Am I, there, you know, there, there are a lot of people, there's a lot of truck, trucking jobs in the military. I mean, logistics is right. a big, huge part of the, of sure. the military. Sure. So a lot of a lot of people come out with a lot of experience if they come out back to duty. They have a lot of experience, but it's like anything else with transitioning military. Do they want to do what they've been doing in the military, or do they want to do something different? So some people that drive trucks in the military want to drive trucks as a living. Some some don't. Some people have never driven a truck in their life want to try it. So they, they have the opportunity to use their GI Bill if they want to get a CDL. With some companies like Swift, and I'm sure there are others, they'll offer a CDL scholarship uh, to give you the opportunity. They have programs for husband and wife. They'll give them both a CDL scholarship. Uh, a military spouse right now can get a CDL scholarship at Swift. I mean, they've... Due to my urging, they've kind of opened the doors about as wide as they can to anybody that's interested uh, can can get a scholarship. Now, is there a time limit on that? Say somebody um, has been out of the military for a while and is driving over the road and his wife, maybe after 10 years or something, says, you know, I'd like to get my CDL. Are they still, uh, would they still qualify? I think so. Okay. This is good to know. I think so. Mm-hmm. Because there are a lot more we, women we, getting We it. act as, as kind of their outreach. We invite them to a lot of events. We get, try to expose them as much as we can. And uh, But they have they have 10 active military recruiters now on uh, online to talk an applicant through the process. Okay. 
yeah, I was going to ask, how does this work? Do people reach out to you online or do they call you up or? Yeah. Oh, to get into vet jobs. Uh huh. Yeah. You basically go to vetjobs.org and you register. It's okay. about as simple as you can get. And, and I, we, we acquired that name because it's easy to remember. Yes, it it's is. It's all one word, vet jobs, all one word, dot org. You go on and register and within, 48 hours, some human being will contact you. That's impressive. And we'll start the, we'll start the process. We'll find out a little bit about you and what field you want to be in, and we'll, we'll start the process. So I, I imagine it depends on what everybody wants to go into before they finally end up in a job placement. And you don't, you don't, need, to, you don't need to know that when you register. We'll help you find we'll, – we'll help you figure it out. Mm-hmm. We're getting we're getting between five hundred and seven hundred new applicants a week. Wow. Is that a lot more than you've been getting a few years ago? Um typically we're getting four to five hundred. Okay. So it's a it's a lot. Yeah, I think it is a lot right now. I think people are for what I you know, we had a really low participation rate. We were down to like sixty percent of people that were able to work or actually working or looking for work. And so it's, it's, it's starting to change. People are starting, whatever caused them to quit their jobs last year, they're, they're coming back and looking now, maybe for whatever reason, a hundred reasons why they left their jobs. And, uh, yes. I've, I've heard it called the great resignation. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty, I've never seen anything like it. You know, there's all kinds of reasons for it. COVID was one of the reasons for a lot of uh, uh, moms, it was the lack of child care and the lack of reliability on whether schools were going to be open or not. Sure. I mean, we have a we have a, a particular program specifically for for moms who had to get out of the workforce for a while. We have a lot of training opportunities for for folks like that. So if they want to get back into the workforce, we have a program called Spouse Nation. If you're, if you're not ready to go to work, we'll, we'll try to keep you in the loop. We'll offer you training opportunities. We'll keep you in the loop. And when you're ready to go back to work, we'll help you. Oh, that's wonderful. So they can keep their skills fresh, essentially? Yeah, especially in the technical world. I mean, if you if you leave a tech job for a year or two, you're, you're going to have to have some kind of training because it, it's grown. You grow so fast. Sure. Uh, it's hard to keep up with if you're not doing it. Oh, absolutely. Well, Tom, I would imagine you, uh, you could agree with that. You've been in the IT world. Oh, How yeah. fast does it change? It, 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 all the time. If you're not prepared, all the time. So you constantly I mean, have to sharpen your It's skills. hard enough to just to keep up with your iPhone and your laptop. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's a really great service. So the spouses, especially when they're moving around the world, they can still, what, get the training online and, and stay uh, sharp. So when they do have an opportunity to get a, a career placement, they can transition easily. Yeah. All, all our people work from home. Okay. We've got uh, 89 people now. And they, uh, they're all work from home. And, uh, and literally all over the world. We have two in Germany and two in Japan, Hawaii, Alaska, all the states. We've been we've been virtual since day one, so it wasn't new for us. Okay, so um, you didn't have to do any adapting. That that's a good thing. Well, I think but what you're doing uh, having your whole team virtual can be a challenge. Which one it of can. the things my wife Debbie does a really good job of is, is trying to keep everybody motivated. Sure. Make sure they understand they're part of a team. and We all have the, the same normal purpose involved. Well, I think what you're doing is absolutely fabulous. Um, I want to delve further. We do have to go to break here. We're talking with retired Rear Admiral Dan Kleppel. He is the founder of VetJobs.org. Tremendous organization and what the organization's doing for our veterans and sp the spouses of veterans. You're listening to the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNC Radio Live. I'm Shelley Johnson with Tom Kelly. Stay tuned for more coming up.
This blog on TNCRadio.live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Six safety tips for truck drivers while driving in the rain. As a truck driver, you'll experience driving in dangerous weather conditions. Driving in the rain creates difficult and dangerous driving conditions for truckers. It's important for truck drivers to be alert and cautious when driving in the rain. Check out our six safety tips for truck drivers while driving in the rain. Slow down. Wet roads make it difficult for a driver to control their truck. A good rule of thumb is to drive five miles per hour below the speed limit. In some cases, you might have to drive more than five miles an hour below. Professional truck drivers adjust their speed according to the weather. When driving in dangerous conditions, only drive the speed you're comfortable with. Leave space. Leaving the appropriate amount of space between each vehicle will give a truck driver enough time to react. A fully loaded tractor trailer traveling at 65 miles an hour needs about five seconds of space to stop. Drivers will have to increase the space between the cars while driving in dangerous weather conditions. Maintain your vehicle. Having your vehicle routinely checked will make driving in the rain more safe. Frequently check your truck's tires to make sure they have enough tread. Also, check your windshield wipers to see if they're working properly. Avoid standing water. Driving through standing water increases the chance of hydroplaning. Hydroplaning causes a driver to lose control of the truck and can result in serious injuries. Standing water also hides potholes and other debris that might be on the road. It's important to always avoid standing water while driving in the rain. Wear your seat belt. Wearing a seat belt is a requirement for all truckers, especially in dangerous weather conditions. Eliminate distractions. While driving in the rain, eliminate all distractions. If you drive with the radio on, turn the volume low so you can concentrate. Avoid touching your GPS or looking at it for long periods of time. And avoid using your cell phone. This blog on TNCRadio.live has been brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. TNCRadio.live, your commercial driver navigation station. Welcome back to the Truckers Network Radio Show on TNCRadio.live with Shelly Johnson and Tom Kelly. We're talking with the founder of VetJobs.org, retired Rear Admiral Dan Kleppel. Admiral, you talked about all of the services you have which i think is it's it's wonderful what you're doing for veterans and their families um, you have a lot of people you said who help you provide this great service and we want to be able to give them some credit who has helped you along the way well we get all our funding from uh foundations and company community giving we haven't ever taken any money from hr departments so uh our, our biggest contributor is, is called the Call of Duty Endowment. And they are connected to a uh, video game maker called Activision. Okay. So my guess is a, a number of our audiences play the video game called Call of Duty. It's, well, it's, the, it's funny, when you said Call of Duty, you thought, well, that's like the video game, but that's it can't be associated. But it, yeah, it's all the same thing, huh? Well, it's kind of an army combat game, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, it's the biggest selling video game ever produced. I mean, literally, when they when they bring out a new version, it sells a billion dollars worth of products in the first week. So Activision does quite well with that video game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so the CEO of Activision uh, set up a foundation, and, and he co-chairs the foundation with General Jim Jones, who's a former commandant of the Marine Corps, and chairman of the Joint Chiefs, and they support about 15 nonprofits that do do what we do, veteran employment, veteran job placement. But of the 15, we are the most productive and most efficient. And as a result, we get the most money. Okay. So we're very grateful to Activision and the Call of Duty Endowment. And uh, I think I was mentioning one of their, their, they not only use money that comes from the company Activision, but they do some fundraising and they, they have a, a very generous company that our truck drivers will be familiar with. It's called the, the pilot company and they, they run the pilot flying J truck stops around. Yeah. Yeah. 
and uh, they have a, a program where they collect change in our convenience stores, and they donated half a million dollars to the Call of Duty endowment last year based on that change they collected. So that's amazing. I'm sure the drivers, when they come in there, are very generous when they see what the what the uh, cause is, and uh, of course we get a little bit of that, and we're very grateful, and we're. Mm-hmm. We're going to try to fill some of those jobs at the Flying J convenience stores uh, in our veteran program. Well, that's absolutely wonderful. And I believe that the trucking industry has one of the highest percentages of veterans, if I'm not mistaken. I wouldn't, of, I wouldn't doubt that. I mm-hmm. wouldn't doubt that. Of any industry, yeah. And, and that's why, well, we're supportive of veterans anyway, but uh, certainly we have a special love for veterans because a lot of our drivers are veterans. And sure. if sure. it weren't for the military, we, who protects our country, wouldn't, we wouldn't have the freedoms we have. So it's Absolutely. a very important cause. Absolutely. Yeah, the data mm-hmm. varies. Some say that it's uh, as little as 15%. Others have it closer to 35%. So let's say 30% of mm-hmm. the drivers that are out there are, are vets, which is extremely high of any profession. Mm-hmm. I think, Absolutely. I think the next highest would be, uh, you know, firemen, policemen, and that's, you know, down in the single digits or something like that. I know there's a, there's a lot of uh, effort being put to attract and train new drivers because it's, uh, it's so important to our supply chain uh, I, I think they're experimenting with a program for, for kids under 21. Yeah. Yep. And I know Swift's part of that experiment. I, I'm not sure uh, what the results are. I think it was, they were keeping them in state in uh, Arizona during the trial. So I'm not sure how that's come out. Yeah, they're trying to expand that. There have been initiatives, especially in the, this past year, with all of the supply chain interruptions and so forth, uh, trying to come up with solutions. So yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's a big problem all around the country. But I'll be is. honest with you, I don't, I don't, I talk to a lot of companies every week. I haven't, I haven't talked to a company in the recent past that's not short of people right now. It is interesting. It's universal. Yeah, uh, well, try to order a pizza. <laughs> yeah, we have delivery drivers. Go into, go into any restaurant. Go into any grocery store. But, yeah, it's like no, a, nobody's got enough people. Where did all the workers go? <laughs> well, I I could spend another hour explaining explaining some of that, but it's it's complicated. There's all kinds of reasons. For instance, I I would say. Well, I know for a fact that about two and a half to three million people that quit their jobs last year were over 55. Right. And they, they were probably counting on their retirement funds to get them through. And I'll be honest, with today's inflation rate, oh, yeah, I'm sure they're going to find out that they didn't quite have enough saved. Oh, it's absolutely so scary. We're trying, to, we're trying to get ready for that surge by offering more training for folks like that because if they want to get back in the workforce they might need they might need a a little extra training to get get them back in sure to give them an edge absolutely what are your current needs as an organization our needs are like any other nonprofit if if we want to do more of what we're doing we need more money to do it we need to hire more of those people that we have out in the field right so we're always looking for uh uh, funders. People would just we, go to your website to contribute or how does that work? Exactly. Just go to vetjobs.org and there's a, a donate section. There's a donate for individuals and there's a donate for the, the, the companies. Mm-hmm. We have, we have an awfully good track record because uh, the call of duty endowment requires us to go through an audit with Deloitte a week-long audit every other year. They go over every job placement we have and every nickel that we spend. Right. Because uh, so there's there's a there's a real person behind every one of those seventy seven thousand one hundred thirty seven job placements we've had. So we're 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 known for our honesty and our accuracy and our statistics and our data. 
That's wonderful. Yep. And we, uh, we're very proud of that. And uh, if, if we want to do more, we're going to have to pay more. I did a cost of living raise April 1st for my people because there's no doubt the cost of living has gone up. Oh, it, it's so my costs yeah. have gone up. Uh, I, I always tell people when I'm looking for money, I'm not looking for money to do what I'm doing. I'm looking for money to do more of what I'm doing. As the demands so more go up. Because it, it's yes. never, you know, the business we're in will always be there. I mean, if you put in all the people that are getting off active duty as full-time guard reserve, mm-hmm. and then the, oh, the people on active duty, that's 240,000 people every year that are leaving the military that need jobs. Yep. And so we need to find jobs. For- we'll never run out of work. I and love we'll what you're doing. we always need more people. This is wonderful. I really appreciate you being on the show. We've been talking with retired Rear Admiral Dan Kleppel. Uh, he's the founder of VetJobs.org. Definitely stop by that website to make a contribution. Or if you know of someone who wants to get into trucking, who's a veteran, a spouse of a veteran, you you folks have a wonderful organization. Thank you for being on the show with us today. I enjoyed it. Thank you for the good questions. And you have a great organization. I'm so glad we had a chance to showcase it. You're listening to the Truckers Network radio show on TNCRadio.live. Stay tuned for more great programming coming up. Thank you for listening to another great interview on TNCRadio.live and the Truckers Network radio show. All of the material you hear on TNCRadio.live on our website, our broadcasts, or our podcasts are copyrighted. There can be no distribution without the express consent of TNCRadio.live and its partners. For inquiries, write us at info at TNCRadio.live.